Hi there, I'm Dr. Gary Simmons of Kareling Clinic Neurosurgery, and I want to talk to you today about complications of spinal surgery. Now, we'll be talking about all types of spinal surgeries, and a lot of them are a tremendous help if you are in big trouble with your spine. Uh, obviously, we try to keep surgery down to a minimum, and the predominant reason to keep surgery down to a minimum is no matter how much precautions we use, no matter how well trained your surgeons are, no matter how many years of experience they have, you can always have complications. The spine is a very tough piece of machinery surrounding some of the most delicate structures in your body, your spinal cord and your nerves. And it is so easy to have problems. So there are multiple types of complications that can occur with any type of spinal surgery. For example, you can be paralyzed by spinal surgery. Where the surgery is, anywhere below there, can be paralyzed under worst case scenarios. And I can tell you it's not, because, it's not like Hollywood where the surgeon says, oops, and slips with a knife and, and cuts everything. There can be big, nasty problems like paralysis, even when it seems like the surgery went perfectly fine. Luckily, that's very uncommon. An individual nerve can certainly be damaged badly in surgery, and you could get weak in one muscle group or two or so. For example, if your C6, a cervical sixth nerve, were damaged in surgery, you might be weak permanently in your biceps muscle not paralyzed everywhere, but permanently weak in a specific muscle. As a matter of fact, probably one of the more common nerves to be injured is the deltoid muscle, which pulls up your shoulder and your arm like this. But um, an individual nerve can be significantly damaged, even when things seem to go well. How could that be? We don't always know. It might be the straw that broke the camel's back phenomena, if you will, that that nerve or the spinal cord was hanging on as best it could, and then just the slightest bit of manipulation, and it goes downhill. But we don't always know. But a lot of times, it's not some obvious disaster that occurs. Now, thankfully, things like that are uncommon. Far more common, and probably the most common to me, is when you don't get what you wanted out of the surgery. You're having tremendous pain in your leg, the surgery is done, and the pain in the leg doesn't go away. Or tremendous pain in your back, and the pain in your back doesn't go away. Well, we still consider that a complication. The surgery didn't work. We put you through all this, and it didn't make things better. That's because it doesn't always have to. Sometimes we could be barking up the wrong tree, or sometimes the nerve or the back, they just don't want to respond the way we want them to. So we consider that a complication. Also more common, but, but not as common as that, would be infection. We're opening up your body. Sometimes we're working inside the body for hours on end, using all sorts of instruments, putting in rods and screws and different materials and bone materials and that sort of thing. And infection, unfortunately, is relatively common. No matter what precautions we take, it's relatively common. A few percentage of all spinal surgeries will have infections. And if it gets infected, sometimes we have to go back to surgery to clean it up and treat with antibiotics for potentially weeks after weeks after weeks. So infection is a problem, and it certainly is a, uh, a consideration in any spinal surgery. I'll talk about one further one at this juncture, and that is something called a spinal fluid leak. Inside your spine, your nerves are contained in a bag of fluid. It's the fluid that when they do a spinal tap, they put the needle into and draw off some of this fluid. It looks crystal clear. It looks like spring water. And during any type of spinal surgery, that bag of fluid can get opened. It can be torn, it can be cut, or sometimes we open it on purpose and then we seal it back up. It loves to leak. As soon as we put a patch on it or seal it up, it still loves to leak. It's like a water balloon filled with clear spring water. And it loves to leak, and if that leakage occurs too much, it can leak out of the wound, and uh, you can't have that. That can lead to infection. And so if there is a leakage of spinal fluid, even if it's contained under the skin, 
often will want to go back and re-repair it. Uh, and this happens a few percentage of cases, particularly in the lower back and particularly in cases of lumbar stenosis. So these are all real complications. They can occur. Thankfully, the really nasty stuff doesn't occur very often, but it can occur. One other one to mention is when we're trying to make bones to grow together in a fusion, well, sometimes the fusion doesn't occur. The bones don't grow together the way we wanted it to, and that's particularly true in smokers. So you smokers out there, it's real important to quit if you're going to get fusion surgery. We can talk about other complications in other sessions, but those are some of the big ones. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye now.